Okay, in this proof on um, dealing with proving triangles congruent, we are going to look at um, using CPCTC and some different triangle properties, plus we're going to uh, maybe do some interesting things with congruent supplements and isosceles triangles. So you're given on this one that EB bisects AEC um, and AEC is isosceles. Now, anytime you see the word bisects, whether it's bisecting a segment or an angle, um, you should be thinking about congruent something. That's telling you that something's congruent. In this case, the fact that EB bisects AEC tells me that angle AEB is congruent to angle BEC, and that's just by definition of angle bisector. I mean, that's a no-brainer on these. Okay, so we know that now that this angle is congruent to this angle. When you see isosceles, isosceles tells us things about angles and sides. By definition, it tells us that uh, AE is congruent to EC. It also tells us that EAB is congruent to ECB as angles, but we're not going to end up needing that in this proof, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that out. But EA is congruent, AE is congruent to EC is something we're going to need, and that's just by definition of isosceles. Um, so we, let's now take um, a look at what we're trying to do. We're trying to prove that this triangle is congruent to that triangle. We already have shown that this length is congruent to that length, so that's one side. And then actually you might notice that we have another side if we want it. DE is congruent to itself by reflexive property, one of the easiest things we do in geometry proofs using the reflexive property, but also very powerful. Um, now we have two sides. So either we need to prove the third side, so we can use side, 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 or the included angle, so we can use side, angle, side. And it turns out that the included angle is the easiest. Um, and you can do that because um, these two angles, if I number them, three and four are supplementary, one and two are supplementary. By congruent supplements, that means since two and three are congruent, one and four are congruent. Congruent supplements can be worded two ways. The way we're using it is if two angles are two congruent angles are supplementary, um, or two angles are supplementary to congruent angles, so four and one are both supplementary to three and two, which are congruent, then the two angles must be congruent. So we first say that angle, and I'm going to use their letter names, DAA and angle AEB are supplementary, and angle DEC and angle BEC are supplementary. Those are both supplementary because of um, linear pairs being supplementary. But now that we have those two supplementary statements combined with this congruent statement, we can claim that angle DEA is congruent to angle uh, DEC, and that's by congruent supplements theorem. And then once we have that, that actually is enough. That gives us our side angle side to prove what it is we set out to prove at the beginning, which is DEA is congruent to triangle DEC. And that is just by side, angle, side. And that's by far the best way to do it. Uh, as it is, I'm not sure there is another way you could get to it uh, without doing that. Uh, you might have been able to prove um, something about the big triangles, but I'm not even sure you could have done that. So, so that is a good way using side, angle, side, using that congruent supplements, which is such an important theorem, um, and that reflexive property, which is also a very powerful and important theorem.